Um, it is being live streamed as you see the recording sign. Uh, again, my name is John Webb. I'm the student assistance counselor at Gosstown High School. And this is Sheehan Gendron, the behavior intervention specialist for the district. Right. Right. Um, and uh, today we're going to be presenting, we've got about 20 slides, not a lot. Um, it's about a 45 minute presentation, just so you have a sense of timing. But we hope that there's a, a dialogue and discussion. By all means, feel free to ask questions in the middle of a slide if you, if you want clarification or um, uh, just have any interest in knowing what a certain term means or um, what an intervention uh, looks like from our end, those kinds of things. Um, but we are um, working under a grant with Signs of Suicide, which is through Connors Climb out of Exeter, is that right? Um, and um, I am very proud to be spearheading going into every ninth grade classroom uh, in the month of September. So what that looks like is that I'll be facilitating um, a slideshow kind of like this, but really designed for ninth graders or high schoolers. And it has videos with high schoolers role playing. Um, and I'll show you a, a screenshot from that. Um, and we'll have a video as well that kind of uh, really emphasizes how important it is to be unafraid to ask, are you thinking of hurting yourself or killing yourself? And how that does not plant the seed in our teens' minds and how it really is the difference maker for um, let it, giving them permission to uh, get help. And then myself and the school counselor for not Middle School will be rolling out the program there as well. Um, and we have the Connors Fund and Time to Suicide provide age appropriate, developmentally appropriate topics and videos for each section that we show. So the high school and the middle school are different. Um, the middle school videos are more of a roundtable discussion of, of peers, their own age that they're going to be watching, and then role plays as well. Right, so we will be hitting the seventh grade as well. I'll be helping out with that as well as she and, and our school psychologist there. The counseling department is also acting as um, a supplementary um, kind of buffers when we do those presentations because we realize this is a, uh, a challenging and sometimes sensitive topic. So we have both another person in the classroom that is co-facilitating but really looking at the kids and seeing who's having a reaction um, and then being able to identify um, who those kids are and how to make sure that they get somebody to talk to um, that day. Uh, and then we have a counselor on call. So if, if a student reacts uh, strongly on that uh, during that, that period or that session um, that we can continue with talking with the kids and get that student to um, an on-call counselor who will be in the school counseling office. Um, challenging topic. Um, a little self-disclosure here. Um, I had a college girlfriend um, that committed suicide uh, about 10 years ago and it, and it shook me to the core. Um, it was very unexpected and uh, it, it hit me for weeks um, uh, trying to understand why. Could I please have a show of hands for anyone in the audience if you or someone you know have been impacted by suicide? Okay, wow. Um, that's why we're here, right? That we know that this is a real issue. It's the second leading cause of death among teenagers. Um, and we take it very seriously. Um, Mrs. Barisi and Mrs. Lewis and um, Mrs. Gendron and I were part of a team that developed a very comprehensive suicide um, protocol plan that um, I think is leading the state with, uh, <laughs> we didn't borrow from anybody, did we? We, 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 we cited, we cited them, but we, it, we really spent um, um, more than a year developing this and it, it's, uh, it's really incredible. Um, a lot of what we're going to be talking about here you can find online at the district website. We have water, a lot of you brought waters, bathrooms, either door. Um, don't be shy if you need to take a, a, a few minutes to um, hit the bathroom or uh, if the topic is, is too sensitive. Um, this is uh, a wonderful new addition to um, our lifeline and resources. Uh, at this point, the reason why we all have to have 603 when we're calling our kids and friends now is that 988 is now a national suicide hotline and crisis um, hotline for anyone. Um, so it is uh, a, a 
a bit of a, of a kind of an automated system at first. They try to get a sense of the urgency uh, of what's going on, and then they directly uh, connect you to a counselor to help. So, um, and then there, there's a text line. Um, if you text ACT to 741741, um, that the kids frequently use that as opposed to the uh, dialing a phone, um, the same kind of uh, program, that it's just super easy for them to just reach out 24-7. Um, and again, it's kind of an automated system that gets to some questions about what's going on and then gets you to a, a live person. Um, you can use these resources as a parent, or you can assist someone you know, or you can provide them for your children. So you can call 988 as a parent and ask for support for somebody that you know is in crisis as well. Next slide, please. Here, I'll just. There we go. So our agenda. Um, we're here to um, help your child, well, if your child is going to go through SOS, um, sign the suicide, um, and learn the Acknowledge Care Child Act, right? So that's really the goal of the program is to help them save a life, right? And you're here tonight to hopefully help. A, familiarize yourself with what your child's going to be learning, and B, learn the same kind of um, acronym and skills that we're going to be giving to your child as well. Um, these skills are generalized to the entire community. You can acknowledge Caratel with your neighbor, the person at the gas station, anybody that you come in contact with that you feel might be at risk, and that 988 and that text, crisis text line can be generalized to everybody that you come in contact with. I also want to um, let you know that we're, uh, while I only spoke about what we're doing in September for the 7th and 9th graders, we are going to unroll this for uh, 10th and 11th and 12th graders as well. There is a modified um, 12th grade uh, presentation because we know that um, they need the skills to know how to get those resources after they graduate. So there's kind of additional resources for them to um, get the help for themselves or a friend. And that's what this is really about, is knowing how to help yourself or help your son or daughter um, or how to help their, or how they can help their friend so they know what to do um, if uh, somebody is feeling suicidal. Okay. All right. Um, this is a kind of a cube of some of the factors. Um, and I hate reading slides, but, uh, and I hate being Captain Obvious on like, well, of course, untreated depression. Um, yes, so untreated depression is a factor. That's why we work our hardest to get kids to come in and, and see us. Um, last year at the school district that I worked at, um, by Christmas there was over 20 safety assessments. And I kept letting parents know and faculty know. I said, no, you need to know this is a good thing that kids are coming down because they are in crisis, because they're coming out of COVID, because they're working through anxiety and depression and stress. They're coming to us and we're getting them the help that they need. So I think most parents were like, no, that seems like a high number. Like, it's okay. It, the numbers are real. It's, it's, um, the, and we don't have the numbers on, on uh, depression yet post-COVID um, in terms of but it, it was one in eight was the estimate before COVID. So, um, you know, if we do the math on how many out of 800 kids, that's 100. So that's a lot of our kids. Drinking your drug use, of course, isolating, withdrawing, and spending more time away from friends or away from doing things that they like to do. Hopelessness, um, that's a key one. Um, in terms of the lethality um, when a, a student um, is expressing um, feelings of wanting to hurt themselves, um, one of the first things that we make sure that we do is talk with parents about access to um, weapons. And then the key to this is, is if they do have the thoughts, is that, again, it, and it, you'll hear this a couple of times, that the research has shown, evidence-based research, it is better to say are you thinking of hurting yourself? Are you thinking of killing yourself? That a student, a teenager, is much more likely to
to say, yes, I am. Thanks for asking. This has been such a weight on my shoulders, such a weight on my mind. I'm going to click on the little, we have a brief video, very powerful video that uh, is about three minutes. You'll notice it. Um, uh oh. Why isn't that working? Mr. Bourget, our tech guy, said, just unplug it and plug it back in. It'll work. <laughs> and he's right. YouTube now um, does give a warning about um, what content is uh, you're looking at. And yes, I wish to proceed. I have my ups and downs, just like anybody else. Maybe more than anybody else. I can be hard to figure out. And I like my privacy. I don't want you looking over my shoulder all the time. But you know your kid better than anybody else. And if you think he's acting different than usual. Acting really down, crying all the time for no good reason. Or getting really mad. Not able to sleep or sleeping too much. Shutting her friends out or giving her stuff away. Acting reckless, drinking, using drugs, staying out late. Suddenly not doing stuff he used to love. Or doing stuff that's just not like him. It might be nothing to worry about. It might just be high school. Or it might be something more. He might be depressed. Not just feeling down, really depressed. It might be that your kid is thinking about killing himself. It happens, more than you think, more than it should. And people say, I had no idea. I thought it was just a phase he was going through. I never thought she'd do it. I wish he'd come to me. I wish he'd said something. I wish I'd said something. When it's too late. So if you think your kid's acting different, if she seems like a different person, say something. Say, what's wrong? How can I help? And ask straight out, are you thinking about killing yourself? It doesn't hurt to ask. In fact, it helps. When people are thinking about killing themselves, they want somebody to ask. They want somebody to care. Maybe you're afraid you'll make it worse if you ask. Like, you'll put the idea in their head. Believe me, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't hurt to ask. In fact, the best way to keep a teenager from killing yourself is to ask, are you thinking about killing yourself? And what if they say yes? Or maybe. Or sometimes? Well, here's what you don't say. That's crazy. Don't be such a drama queen. You're making too much of this. That boy's not worth killing yourself over. That's not going to solve anything. You're just trying to get attention. You're not going to kill yourself. What you do say is, I'm sorry you're feeling so bad. How can I help? We'll get through this together. Let's keep you safe. A lot of people think about killing themselves, adults and kids. Most of them never try it, but some of them do. So if your kid says, I'd be better off dead. I can't live with this. I'm going to kill myself. Take her seriously. Find someone she can talk to about it. Someone who knows how to help. Sometimes kids want to kill themselves because something happened. A breakup, a failure. But sometimes it goes deeper, and it's not going to go away by itself. Get some help. Talk to your doctor. Or a counselor at school. Or your minister. But don't just let it drop. And make sure that your kid always has someone to turn to. Someone he trusts. Make a list together, right then. Three, four, five names. Put a suicide hotline number on there, too. Have him keep that list in his wallet so he always knows where to turn. Make sure your home is safe. If you have pills she could use to hurt herself, lock them up. If you have a gun, don't just lock it up. Get it out of the house, the bullets too. And one more thing, if you think your kid might be about to hurt himself, don't leave him alone. Take him to the emergency room. Call 911 if you have to. We all have our ups and downs, but sometimes it's more than that. If you think something's wrong, the only way to find out is to ask. Ask straight out. Are you thinking about killing yourself? Don't wait until you're sure. Trust your gut. Because it never hurts to ask. And it can make a big difference. All the difference. In your kid's life. Now 988. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
So how can we prevent suicide? That's a piece that we're working on with your kids. That's a piece that you're working on with your kids. That's a piece that SOS is gonna help them work on with each other as well. Um, one of the first building blocks of it is treating the depression, right? That was kind of that, and I do appreciate where they put depression in this cube, right? Kind of at the base, right? Um, and that's kind of sometimes where it can exist. So treating the depression, depression is treatable. Substance use is treatable. Um, you know, counselors are available for those things and for your students. And we want them to know that too, that this isn't something that's wrong with you. It's something that can be helped. Um, coping skills, feelings of hope, preventing access to guns. You know, they said it in those, um, you said it in the video. Sometimes it's not about just locking them up. It's about getting them out of your house, whether that's leaving with them with a trusted family member, a, another trusted neighbor. The police station will also hold your firearms for you. And this is good information for the community to have and share. They will hold your firearms for you for a short amount of time as well if there's crisis in your home or crisis in, in your family's home um, as well. And I always like to share that information. Um, healthy habits, coping skills. We talk about coping skills. Um, all the time. Sometimes it's more than just talking to your kid about coping skills, showing your kid coping skills, teaching them the actual coping skills. It's a ton of the work that I do here um, and throughout the district. And then healthy habits, obviously. Sleep, eat, all those things that teenagers are not very good at <laughs> um, that are still incredibly important. Um, I don't know how many times, if I had a penny for all the times I talked about sleep with a student, I would not be working here probably. <laughs> no offense, no offense. Um, and then connections to peers and trusted adults, right? Um, it's not just us as parents, it's who else is my child connected to? Is it auntie? Is it band um, teacher. Person, teacher? Is it um, counselor. camp counselor? Things like that, right? So having more trusted adults beyond us, because no offense, our kids aren't don't tell us everything, um, don't want to tell us everything, but they might tell auntie, right? when they're really struggling. So having additional trusted adults within their circle. And I can tell you just today, I saw about nine or 10 kids, two were directly referred from teachers. That, that teachers in this school are the eyes and ears because that's where the kids are and they see them for 90 minutes a day. And they can look, they can see their face, their face. And it's like, you don't look well, you don't, you're, something's going on. You need to go to the school counseling office right now or the nurse. Um, and two times today, and I, I um, thank them both personally. I'm just like, you just don't know. Like it, those could have been just minor, like on a scale of one to 10, like a two or a three, but it could also be a seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, so with those nine and tens, we do our best um, to get those kids connected to parents so that when um, confidentiality needs to be broken because of harm, we contact parents. Um, and then we get them to the help that they need, whether that's through your doctor, emergency room, or an outside counselor. Um, and just a little bit more about that scale of one to 10. Um, Mrs. Barisi has, a, I don't know, 280 students, 60 seniors, like a, a lot. And that's what I used to do too. Um, Mrs. Lewis has given me the distinct pleasure and joy of having 1,054 students. So I get all of your kids and I love it. However, I'm only working with them when they're in that six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 range. So I'm only counseling. I'm not doing any college stuff. I'm not doing any schedule stuff. I'm only working with your kids on coping with anxiety, stress, and depression. And I love it. I'm, I've never been happier. All right, let's see if this is working again. Of course not. Okay, so um, this is whoop, this is just uh, this is a screenshot. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Barisi. This is a screenshot from one of the videos, just to kind of show you um, the what does that look like. So they're in the library, and we've got one um, a teenager or middle schooler to the right who is withdrawing and hopeless and showing those signs, and then we have the uh, friend on the left who is doing those interventions that we're training your kids to do. Acknowledge, care, tell. You're gonna hear that a lot tonight. Your kids are gonna hear that a lot over the next month and year. We're um, posters and whatnot that we wanna make sure that, um, especially with the tell piece, and we'll get to that, but 
Um, a lot of kids have the stigma of like, I, I have to keep the secret or I don't want to be a snitch. We need to break that in our culture. We have to. We have to say it's okay and better to have a mad friend than a dead friend. We just have to keep hitting that home. So that's what, oh, yeah, next. Oh, I've just given this to you. <laughs> I, I have to on this. Yeah, yeah, it's not working. All right. All right. So if your child sees signs of suicide, they are learning act. We, we're asking our youth to act, acknowledge, care, tell. So acknowledge signs of depression and suicide in a friend. We go through the, that same cube. We go through those um, warning signs with all of the students that are going to be participating in, in SOS. Um, they do, again, they do it in kind of a video format for the high schoolers. There are some um, youth who have struggled with different things, um, depression, suicide, substance use, um, their sexuality, things like that are presented in true stories um, by the youth themselves. And then following that, there's a discussion. And then following that, there's a role play that kind of goes through the right and the wrong things to do, right? For example, don't keep secrets, things like that um, are all presented to the youth. Um, care, show your friend that you care in the right versus wrong. It's again, it's not, oh yeah, you'll be fine. I, you know, that's normal, right? and there's a big wrong, wrong that flashes right. on the screen, right? We want them to get it. <laughs> um, and then there's an example of the things that we do say, we validate, we say, we're there for you. I care about you enough that I'm not gonna keep your secret, things like that, and the skills are presented. And then tell a trusted adult. And we ask the youth to, youth to identify who their trusted adults are. In one, it ends up being a teacher. In another, it's um, a band director, things like that. So there are different examples throughout each video about who a trusted adult can be. And then in the discussion piece, we ask the youth to identify for themselves who their trusted adult is and write it down. Right. The, the role play also um, does a nice job with uh, kind of, you would do the same for me if I was saying these things and I'll go with you. So it really is giving these kids those skills to like, what's the language that you use instead of, oh, okay, I guess I'll keep your secret. Um, you need to be, be able to have teens know uh, what those phrases and words and, and ways that they can acknowledge care and then, and then I'll go with you, you know? And, and, I'm, and I'm not gonna let you just, um, you know, say, oh, I didn't really mean it. Uh, I take it very seriously, and if you're not going to go with me, I, I have to tell somebody about it. Um, so we're going to go a little bit further into acknowledge. Again, I'm not going to read everything. Can everyone read them in the back row? Yes, thumbs up. Okay, awesome. So for me, I'm going to emphasize this one is huge. The big changes. So those are, the, those are the big, that's the biggest warning sign that I've personally, anecdotally um, noticed as, as a factor. When somebody who is super athletic and really loved doing sports all of a sudden stops playing and stops caring and starts sleeping more or uh, hanging out with different friends and making not so good choices. Um, and then the other one over here, of course, is that they allude to suicide, allude to hurting themselves, allude to not wanting to wake up the next day, or say it, or write it. Or I've seen artwork that a student has many times, uh, a student ha has expressed uh, not wanting to be around, or signs of death that we follow up on everything. Um, Gonna get real with you again. Um, who was here in the early mid '90s? Anybody? A student here or a resident here? What's our what? What's the old nickname from from 30 years ago? Suicide. Yeah. So 30 years ago, when I guess CNN was just getting big, and we got this moniker, which was around our neck for a decade. Um, I started here in the year 2000, and I became a part of Youth Forum, which Mrs. McCarthy will talk about in terms of how adults working in the school and community have conversations with kids who can have real conversations with adults working in the school and community. And it was uh, started by Reverend Bill Exner, if, you, if anyone knows 
Trevor Nexner, rest his soul. Um, he needed to do something to get the conversation going so that we could continue the conversation and dialogue about how we help our kids. So hopelessness, that would, that would be another one huge. And then at pain, it doesn't have to be physical pain, it's, it's emotional pain. Um, I work every day. Sheehan works every day with kids with emotional pain, with not knowing how to not feel that sadness or stress or anxiety. And anxiety and depression go hand in hand. If you have anxiety long enough, depression is right there. Drinking and drug use, um, as Sheehan mentioned, that is in, on some of the uh, videos. Um, so we, we wanted you guys to know we're not afraid to talk about any of these topics with our kids. That it's important to know that if a kid is making those decisions, those bad choices, this can lead to, I mean, alcohol is a depressant. Taking drugs can lead to big changes in behavior, withdrawal from friends. It can lead to anger if they don't have it. Sleeping would be the last one on this, because teens sleep, I, I get it. <laughs> Next slide. Um, so C is again care. So show that you care. Um, and in the video, I think the teens did a great job. And, and again, in the videos that your youth will see, it's right versus wrong, right? The things that we do say versus what we don't say when we're talking to our peer or even talking to ourselves or, you know, hopefully talking to a trusted adult. And all of our staff are going, are going through signs of suicide as well. So they're, they're also getting this additional boost of, you know, how to help when they become the entrusted adult and what to say to a youth who's in, in crisis, right? And in the the best word to describe it is validation, right? I understand, I hear where you're coming from, I see you're in pain, I'm here to help, right? Um, you know, kids don't care, don't wanna hear what happened to us because we're dinosaurs, <laughs> right? They don't care what happened to auntie whenever because she's, she's perfect, they don't care what happened to Susie down the street, right? What's happening for them is their truth and their reality. And all they need to know is that we're here for you and we hear you and we believe you. We believe you. We believe that you are struggling, that you have pain, that you have suffering, and we can help. And then telling a trusted adult, and I, I can't emphasize that enough, how important it is for us to give kids permission to break that promise, if they did make a promise, to uh, do whatever it takes to save that friend or make sure that friend gets um, the help that they need. I, I often uh, talk about um, when I first started, there was a student named Sarah who uh, sadly kept the secret that her best friend had said, I'm, I'm gonna go home and hurt myself. And uh, um, this was at a different school, but um, she kept the secret. And you know, two people died that night. That's how I see it. It's like the, the student that that killed themselves, and then Sarah, who lives with the guilt to this day about, I could have, I could have helped, I could have helped. And I use it, that's not the real name. I, but I use that story sometimes to say, you're going to have this burden of, of, oh my gosh, I have this knowledge and responsibility to do something. And you're going to come into the school counseling office, and you're going to see your counselor, Mrs. Barisi, you're going to see me, or you'll see Sheehan, and we're going to take that burden right off your shoulders and say, we've got you. We've got your friend. We know how to help. We have great resources. Um, and again, we're working hard to change the culture about um, snitching. Snitches. If I had a penny for every time, I would. Yeah, yeah too. Um, so if you're wor if your child's worried about your friend, so we focus a lot about what to do for yourself, and the SOS program also focuses a lot about what to do when your friend comes to you like that, um, in that state, or you notice something online, um, which is also a specific scenario from the SOS program as well, because I know that that's all that's how they communicate. You all know that that's how they communicate, right? Um, less and less face to face, more and more online. So and so posted something, or so and so hasn't been posting something forever and ever, and they come to you and say something like that. So if your child is worried about their friend, listen to your child's concerns. Again, I go back to validation. 
I think val I'm going to put validation in the in the bottom of the cube as well, right? As a as a core sort of foundation for how to communicate with your your young adult. Um, so listen, validate, hear where they're coming from, contact that friend's parents directly, whether you know them or not. Um, that's what I would want. I'm assuming that that's what everyone would want. I hope that that's what everyone would write, want is that direct communication. Contact that person directly. If you can't get their information, kids are also gurus at that, right? They can find so-and-so in an instant. Um, or contact the school to get some information or to relay some information to us to help you support getting in contact with that other parent. Um, contact school mental health staff, yeah. Um, yep. Myself, John Webb, your school's, um, your child's school counselor, Miss Lewis, lots of resources available for you. Um, if you're concerned, you can immediately call 911. Yep. You can ask for a wellness check at yep. that student's residence, right? And I promise you, your kid knows enough to get the police there, right? Um, or to get the police in contact with that student. And then reassure, like Mr. Webb has said many, many a times, that they're doing the right thing, that there's there's no such thing as like snitching when it comes to safety. We also have cards for the mobile crisis unit. So they, uh, for a good five years or more, um, they've been a, a really incredible um, part of the mental health um, organization through, I think our county, is that right? That um, instead of uh, the kids and uh, teens and young adults that were going to the ER and waiting to be seen and waiting to be seen, waiting to be seen, they specifically trained these people to come to the house or come to the school and do the assessment needed for those teens. So that's kind of, that's been a win-win for the health industry because they've got fewer people in the emergency room and better direct resources around mental health and intervention that can come to you. And that has been huge. Um, we access them a couple times a year, I would say. Um, parents have asked us them like on the weekends and whatnot. Um, or vacations when you can't call us and say help, <laughs> um, that we certainly say 911 if it's an emergency, if there's imminent danger, and then 988 uh, and mobile crisis un un uh, unit, and then also the emergency rooms. If, you know, worst case scenario is I, I need to get my friends or my friend's friends, make sure that that parent has, you, you know, you can say, please take them to the, the ER right now. There's emergency services there. When you do contact 911, you can often specify that this is a mental health crisis or we're calling specifically for my, my youth, my youth friend, things like that who are, who's struggling with suicide, that sometimes they have their own specific mental health training in, in different departments, fire, police, and things like that. But that sometimes can tamper down when sirens blaze in, gun, you know, doors bang in, things like that. So you can specifically say that you're, um, in, with a youth in a um, mental health crisis. I frequently use the metaphor, especially with um, our teenage boys, about tools for the tool belt, mm -hmm. like coping tools, um, and teaching them two or three of just like, this is gonna be your hammer for the day. We're gonna talk about diaphragmatic breathing. What's that? That's, that's what singers do. It's just deep breathing where your belly is moving back and forth. And if you can do it long enough, your anxiety goes away. And it, they go, really? It'll, try it. It works. It's worked for 20 years of my uh, career, at least as a temporary, like, I'm no longer in a panic attack. I can self-regulate, get calm. And now I know if I start to feel the trigger, I can practice my diaphragmatic breathing. Um, but really, this conversation is for you guys. So we, we're giving you the adult version of what we're going to be doing with Grades seven through 12, we are getting the eighth grade two. Are we doing sixth too? Not this year, no. okay. And then the beautiful thing about this and the way I, I see it is th this is CPR for mental health. So every student is gonna be trained on how to help themselves and help their kids just like CPR. So that we are actively training everyone so they know what to do and so they have the language. And then in years to come, they won't see the same videos. They'll see a refresher course. So they won't be like, oh, I saw that video last year. Oh my God, not the same thing. Um, we're, we, they have a very clear plan and, and we're going to just reinforce with new, 
new ways of driving this home. Um, certainly, for you guys uh, and for your kids, um, we want you to have a support plan or people around you. We want your sons and daughters to have a plan of resources. Um, I tell every student that I meet, and I've I've met a lot of new faces. I just I say. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the uh, student assistance counselor, which means that I'm everyone's counselor. When you are near crisis or in crisis, I'm here for you. So is Shan. Part-time. She's also at Mountain View. Mountain View, and Maple, Bartlett. Maple, and Bartlett. Um, building protective factors. So your kids and you, right, have things around you, people around you that kind of pad, pad your world, right? Make it a little more tolerable, things like that. Um, students, some students thrived in distance learning, some didn't. We've brought them all back together now. So we're, there's an uptick of social interactions and things like that. We're, we're coping with the with COVID fatigue and all sorts of new things that are coming to our world. So coping skills, are now more important than ever. Um, most teens, you know, if you ask them what their coping skills, they can maybe rattle off a handful to you, right? It's And sometimes there's lots and lots and lots and lots of little things that we do every single day that we don't remember. Like there's a, sorry to pick on you guys, table full of water bottles over here, right? Like my, I have my own emotional support water bottle with me 99% <laughs> of the time. I can take a sip, right? It's nice and cool, it's icy, it feels good, right? And I joke, Get a water bottle, get a water bottle, change your world, um, right? But there's lots and lots of things that we do. There's probably a few leg shakers in here, right? We're doing little tiny things to cope all the time. Share that with your kids though. Say, I have an emotional support water bottle. I'm a leg shaker. I am a pen clicker. Some people can't stand it, but sometimes I have to click my pen, right? Stressful meeting. I'm not holding this paper because I don't remember don't, everything I need to say. This is protecting me. This is putting some distance between all of you and me, right? <laughs> like you didn't know that I was coping in this moment, but it happens and we don't always have that conversation or it becomes a, mundra a mundane conversation of like, what are your skills? Oh my God, she's, it's a counselor. She's gonna ask me what my skills are, right? But show, show them, model, teach share, have a dialogue with them about what you're doing to cope so that they can pad their world a little bit better too. Uh, I just wanted to show you, um, I've got a box of cool stickers like Good Vibes or um, my favorite one in here is the, uh, uh, I can't believe I don't have it memorized. Uh, oh, it, it's something like, um, everyone can't be great. We're not pizza. <laughs> um, but if somebody wants to look through, especially if you ask a question later on, <laughs> I'm going to be um, using these in my classroom presentations. I've got Stranger Things and Rick and Morty, too, in terms of like, uh, hey, ask a question, get a free sticker for your water bottle. <laughs> Incentive. Um, yeah, so exercise. This is where um, we would love to have more of a little bit of an interactive dialogue with you guys. Like, could you all or could anyone say like, my teenager loves to do this to cope. Like I trail run. That's that's the way I deal with my stress is that I love going out with my guy friends and going four to six miles uh, at least twice a week. That's that's me. You guys have a, a teenager with a favorite coping skill that are willing to share? Yes. Run, great, yeah, yeah. Music, okay. Any particular style or artist? No, they're like Fitbits and So rap. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, the Spotify playlists are massive, I love asking kids like, what are you listening to? Make me a playlist. Um, anyone else? Gaming? Like Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Yeah. I think they might be 
Yes. <laughs> Anybody else? We do ping pong. I think ping pong. Oh. You know, when we were yeah. all home during COVID, you know, I worked from home, had the kids, and like we would just get to a point where we would say ping pong. Like, <laughs> Nice. Got a new board, you know, and it's nice for my son. He can push it back up. And so, like, if I'm like, I'm not playing with yours anymore, or when he gets to it, he's like, okay, you can keep on and do it. I love it. I love it. Um, certainly, gaming is a common de stressor. Um, in your living room. <laughs> And wonderful. And, and wonderful. wonderful. And wonderful. I, I'm working with one student, um, a male actually, uh, around a gratitude journal. And he's totally embracing it. Um, and uh, I'm just so thrilled. I'm just like, yes, reflect on like, what are your goals for just the day? Just one thing. Or what are you happy about, grateful for that you can reflect on and learn and grow? Um, and then on top of that, there's the... Um, there's the individual coping skills and then there's the coping skills that we do like with our groups, right? So John runs with friends. Um, like I get together with my friends and we just have a chat, right? Um, and there's a million resources out there for our kids. Although it feels like COVID has shut everything down, we are trickling back to more normalcy. We have lots and lots of clubs here at Goffstown and that human connection is incredibly important to coping too. So if you feel like you're at a loss with your with your youth about how to get them connected, that's why we have wonderful Crispin House representative here, um, or their school counselor to ask about clubs. Um, and the club list has not gone out yet, but will go out and we have older versions available as well. So there's lots and lots of things to get your youth involved and we will that will be part of our signs of suicide piece as well. I, I neglected to also acknowledge uh, Wendy and Jessica uh, and Brandy are here from, Wendy from the SAU and it's Jessica right and Brandy from um, Mountain View Middle School that I don't know if any Mountain View Middle School parents here oh awesome okay so know that you're you're represented by their leaders here too um, talking to teens um, Again, I hate reading slides. You guys can read this slide. I'm going to tell you while you read it. My favorite way of talking with my teens was the drive. And it's the drive to where they want to go. So they're motivated to get in the car. And I get them in the front seat. And then I get to ask them questions about their day, their life, you know, whatever's on my agenda. And they can't escape. There's no, no AirPods allowed. It's sort of like, and it, you know, so no, very little to no eye contact, a little bit safer there. So as a counselor, I, I, I kind of like that as to like not go into counseling mode and be like, like this warm, empathetic, not your body language, which I do typically with, with students. My kids see that a mile away and we're like, oh, dad, no, now reflect feelings again. <laughs> um, but it's crucial to know that that they can talk to you about these issues. Mental health is has been a big stigma for ever. You know, and as, and I'm going to, again, speak as a parent of three. Um, there are times that when my kids have struggled, I've had thoughts of what have I done wrong? How have I failed my kid? Oh, right. They're not perfect. Oh, right. Life is stressful. Oh, right. COVID. Oh, right. Guess what? Mental health and depression and anxiety um, is very much a factor body image, very much a factor, especially for our girls. Um, uh, males not wanting to talk about emotions very well. Not, ever, not all of them, but, but a lot of them. It's very hard for them to talk about it. Oh yeah, that's a factor. Um, nope, no, I haven't yet to meet a parent that's, that feels like, I did it perfect, I've raised the perfect <laughs> child, and look. It doesn't exist, we're humans, we make mistakes. If you are finding that your youth is having a strong reaction to the words mental health and again, the stigma that may be connected to that, find something different to say about it. Talk about their wellness, right? And mm. when we talk about wellness, we talk about whole wellness, right? Your whole body, which encompasses so many more things than just how you're physically feeling. It's a-okay to you know talk to your kid about their sprained wrist from basketball. It's less okay to talk about 
or seems less okay to talk about how is it making you feel that you're not playing basketball anymore? You must really be missing that, right? So if, if, if you're finding that your youth is having a lot of stigma, try a backdoor approach. Use a different, different wellness term to get to the core of what might be going on for them. And they're way smarter than we think they are around <laughs> emotional issues. Uh, I've yet to meet a student who didn't, with a little bit of prodding or a little bit of open-ended questions, have a solution to try or two or three or something in the past that has that has worked well for them like oh, I, I, that worked two years ago I could, I could try that again let me I'll let you know okay. Mr. Webb oh my god how do you how did you know and I'm like well, you knew you had the answer you just had forgotten that it worked um, and it's okay not to rush so you know if they're not in an emergency if they're not in crisis it's okay to say yeah let's, let's check in later about that The videos that we're gonna show the kids are gonna be direct. They are gonna have a little bit of a, uh, yeah, I'll keep your promise, Joey. And then and the video goes, wrong, wrong answer. Um, but um, we are really training our teenagers to be direct. Um, I think the biggest thing, and it, it says it at the bottom, is that you're communicating that you're not afraid to talk about mm. their pain. Right, and hopefully that encourages them to not be afraid to talk about their pain, and that's that's one of the biggest barriers, and that's really what thoughts of suicide are trying to communicate: is that I'm in so much pain, I am, or I have moved even from pain into suffering, and I don't feel like I can stand to live like that anymore, right? And sometimes, um, the direct again, the direct questions we know the research tells us we ask the direct questions here at school when we're doing an assessment. Do you want to die? Do you not want to be alive? Um, do you want to hurt yourself? Often means different things to different, different people. So you might have to take that question specifically a step further. But if that's the one you have to start with, because that's the one that you can get out, then start, start there. And we've been using the Columbia severity scale around suicide assessment. If you want to look that up, it's Columbia severity. It is, um, it's the blueprint for how schools are assessing severity um, around ideation. And it has a whole color system. It's very easy to use. It's uh, a page front and back. Um, and, it's, and it's great information for a parent when we do it, that we just say, we need to let you know that this is the information that your son or daughter shared with us. And this is the information we need you to bring to their outside counselor or bring to the emergency room or bring to um, uh, your doctor to find an outside therapist make sure they're safe oh, we've talked about some of these um, I shared my taking a drive but certainly a walk or, or a game um, enlisting other trusted adults uh, I, I'm a huge huge fan of um, being unafraid to call uh, an another you know, friend of my son or daughter's um, parents and saying, I need you to know I'm, um, I'm worried, or uh, this is what my son said, your son said, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing my part as a caring adult um, or as a reporting uh, a, a adult, a mandated reporter, um, that all of us here in the school are mandated reporters. If we uh, uh, feel that there's any danger, we have to act on it. We will act on it. I promise you, there's n there's no one here in this building who will not understand the training of, uh, if I'm at all concerned in any way, even if they're, my, I heard it as a joke, that we will get them seen and referred and assessed to make sure that they're safe. Um, my number one tip when doing any sort of work with teens and families is ask your teen if they want you to listen if they want you to just hear what they're saying or if they want help. We as parents are problem solvers, right? From the minute our kid falls down when they're little, <laughs> and scrapes their knee, we pick them up, we tell them, shh, it's okay, we'll get you a Band-Aid. Got an ice pack, boo-boo bag, whatever you called it in your freezer, right? We are problem solvers. We do not want our children to feel in pain. It makes us incredibly uncomfortable to see them in pain. 
They don't always want our help though, or they don't want it right that minute. Instead, what they need you to do is just listen. So my number one knee jerk go to, put it in your toolbox, throw it on your tool belt, whatever you carry around. Do you want help? Or do you want me to just hear? Do you want me to just listen? I also want you to know, I always see a look of relief. There's sometimes anger around, you have to tell my mom, yes. But I've always noticed a, either a sigh of relief or a, oh, thank goodness. It's no longer a secret. I'm no longer keeping it to myself. Um, real quick on movie or TV show, um, 13 Reasons Why a few years ago. Is that, is that a thing that people have been aware of? That's an opportunity, right? So please use those kinds of things as an opportunity to say, wow, you seem really shaken up by that show. What, what's going on? What happened? Or can I watch it with you? No, mom. Um, well, tell me about it. What did it, what did it stir up? I didn't, uh, anyway, opportunity. I think, oh, we're almost done. All right, so we're just reinforcing again we love the acronym ACT because it's action, but it's acknowledge, care, tell. Um, the caring part, um, we're not training your kids to be mini counselors. We're just giving them um, the words and phrases to just acknowledge um, that they hear their friends, that they validate. That's the right word, Sheehan, that they validate them for feeling the way they feel. and They're not crazy and they're not, oh, well, this go away. They say, no, I understand you're going through this and I know I, I can get you to uh, somebody who can help. So warning signs, listening for those. We've talked about those at length. Even if it's inferred or indirect, it's important for kids to know, you know, if, you, if they're giving things away and talking about, I won't need those anymore, that's a warning sign. So we'll, we'll be talking with kids about that. Positive supports and then talking about suicide and ready to listen. Next slide. So um, the first bar I want you guys to focus on is the accidents bar. This is leading deaths um, in teenagers in the US. Um, clearly there has been a significant drop in the amount of accidental deaths that have occurred in the, in the United States in teens. There's multitude of reasons for that, we have um, better driving laws, we have seatbelt laws, we have hands-free laws, we're talking to our kids about you know, being safe in their car, being safe in their community and things like that. So we've taken sort of a public health approach to teen driving and teen accidents, which has caused a significant drop. Um, unfortunately, we haven't seen the same trends in suicides. Um, and in New Hampshire, it is the same statistic. In New Hampshire, suicide is the second leading cause of death um, for teens and for, well, for actually for all ages in New Hampshire. Um, that's a whole nother presentation. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and the goal is, right, that we make this a public health issue, that we add prevention to all of our doings to not just you as parents, but to us here at the school, to community events and things like that. So the goal is that the more we can get it out there, the more we talk about it, the more we make smoking cessation, another huge one, huge one, became a public health issue, right? Smoking has significantly decreased. So we're not at all asking you to do this alone. We don't even want you to do it alone. You know, enlist the people that are around you to help you. Enlist the people you know that are experts or trained or have dealt with this before so that we can create a decrease, maybe just in our community first and then move on from there. Or your friend groups, the people who couldn't come today, if, if they're talking to you about like, I think I'm worried about my son being depressed. He's really withdrawn and, and feels hopeless. You can be like, you know, there's a GTV show with Sheehan and John that you should really watch because it kind of spells out exactly how to recognize signs of suicide, how to acknowledge, and how we have trained all of our kids um, to have those skills to get them help. Yes. Yes. It, it was 2000 to 2015, roughly. 
So here, here's where we um, have a parent page for you. And uh, if you want to take a screenshot of that, or uh, it's on our website. It's in the email. Thank you, Joyce Lewis. Um, that we um, have a lot of resources for you. Um, we've got an anonymous screening, if you feel like you're not sure. Um, and we've got Diane McCarthy here to talk a little bit about Crispin's House and what great work that they do for our youth. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so as John said, I'm Diane McCarthy. I'm the executive director of Crispin's House Coalition for Youth here in Goffstown. For those of you who aren't familiar with us and our work, we are your local nonprofit who advocates for our youth and our families here in town. We're about 30 years old. Our mission is to encourage and empower positive choices in the lives of our young people by helping to create a supportive and healthy community. We do that in a number of ways. We run a variety of different programs. Um, they all vary in scope. We have a volunteers program over at Mountain View Middle School. This will be the second year we run it. It is specific to our middle schoolers in grades five through eight. Um, it's designed to do a couple things. First off, give them a healthy supervised activity to do in their after school hours. It's also designed to help connect them to their service-minded peers and other folks in their community. Statistics show that children who volunteer and are connected in their community have healthier outcomes, higher rates of matriculation. They feel um, more empowered. We also run um, specific to suicide prevention. I want, we do direct community um, information. I run trainings on suicide prevention um, for adults and caregivers. Uh, we have also offered, and I intend to do so again, it is a suicide prevention youth leader training. We ran it pre-COVID. The intention was to continue it on like a two-year cycle, which of course COVID completely blew up, but that's okay because we'll get it back. Um, long and short of it is it was a full day intensive training for 30 youth leaders and it was supposed to be 15 um, supportive adults. And the reason why I say supposed to is because Gosstown is a truly remarkable community. And we actually blew through that. We had 19 supportive adults and we had others on the waiting list that we just had to turn away. Same thing with the kids. We were capped at 30 for participation. We had, I don't know how many in the wings looking to get in. So a lot of interest and what that will provide for kids. Everybody will be trained in signs of suicide, which is fantastic because it is simple, it is clear cut, it is, it is easy. This will take it for the next level for anybody who wants to be a youth leader. It is optional, but we look to offer that in the spring. Um, John also referenced uh, Youth Forum. Now Youth Forum here at Goffstown High School, I think is in year 28. Um, and as previously mentioned, that was started um, when we had some pretty significant indicators that our kids were not thriving here. Um, we also have run it at Mountain View Middle School, again, COVID, um, but we are looking to get that started again um, with Mrs. Milligan's support this, this year um, for our seventh and eighth graders. At the middle school, it is, um, it's a youth leader, uh, program again that focuses on empowering the kids. This is often the kids' very first indication that they can make a difference, you know, because we're asking them what is important to you, what do you want to do, and then we're working on helping them see that through to, to fruition, which is incredibly powerful. Um, Youth Forum at the high school is a collection. Um, we've got supportive, invested adults from the community, whether it's town administration, Crispin's House, the library, Y, GHS, Guidance, Clergy Association, Parks and Rec, in addition to a variety of um, different high school students. Um, we meet once a month. It is an open round table. Again, it helps the kids build relationships between the adults, importantly as well, not to, is that the adults are building relationships amongst themselves. So when we're seeing something, we're seeing a need, there's a concern, there's some response that we need to as a community and as a network come together to meet the needs of our kids, we've already got it. And that is so important and so much to Goffstown's credit because if we go back like 
let's go back seven years when the, you know we started having all kinds of you know conferences statewide. So many communities are still in the silo. They're people who work with their kids. They don't have relationships with each other. It's like, oh, I, I don't know how to approach so and so. I, I don't know. I'm trying to get in there. Goffstown, we got it going on. Um, and I'm so proud of us for that. And um, and it really is um, such a pleasure to have the strong working relationships we do between um, our folks invested in youth in, to serve our kids. Several slides ago, I will wrap up. Several slides ago, Sheehan had talked about protective factors. That's what we do. It, you know, all of our programs look different. They're different in scope. They're, you know, different topic. At the end of the day, every last one of them is designed to help build protective factors for our kids in terms of mental health and substance misuse prevention. Um, my business card is there if anybody would like to take it. We're obviously, we're on the web. Um, certainly happy to answer any questions. Um, I'll send it back. I know, I talked a lot. <laughs> Earlier, she said she was a woman of few words. And I was like, <laughs> I've been in youth forum with you. <laughs> you. You all have this in front of you. Um, it's a nice takeaway to capture some of the key things that we've talked to you about um, that feel free to put it on the fridge. Hey, what's that? Oh, mm -hmm. why don't you should ask? Yeah, you guys are leave gonna... it in the bathroom. They all oh, go in there. Yeah. <laughs> We put those in the bathroom too. Yeah. The, the little <laughs> tearaway things as well. Like that's where they get it. All right. That's it. That's our presentation. Thank you so much. Um, that's our e those are our emails. But it, if you have any questions, we're more than happy to answer them for you or with you. So those who have been involved with the Crispin House um, youth, what was effort? It was first response youth youth leader suicide have had that training and come back and excuse me within clubs and groups and things like that had conversations with their peers. They also get some suicide prevention and discussion in the um, mental health unit of health class as well. So at it, it and that varies on when your student kind of takes health and so. That's another one of our goals is that everyone's going to have all this information at the same time. We're going to have a common language. We're going to be talking about the same thing versus the ninth grader who took health or the senior who took health. And, and all adults in all buildings are trained for suicide prevention of a minimum of a two hour training for the last three years, four years. Um, so, so the adults are all aware of the language and trained to how to get kids help. But, um, Yes. Can you, can, sorry, it's terrible. Can you guys use the <laughs> So signs of suicide goes through fifth, sixth grade. Um, we as kind of a mental health and prevention team have been discussing what we can do for fifth graders. Um, whether that's we adapt this in some way or we use a different program that maybe just talks about wellness or mental health or something like that in general. So it's on, this is not, necessarily provided through fifth grade and it's a it's a discussion that we're having and Joyce Lewis is our for K through 12 is our suicide prevention uh, what's your official title? Liaison <laughs> thank you um, do you want to, anything else to add on that I don't talk really loud, but I'll try to talk louder. Um, this year we're um, planning to do grades seven through 12. We're gonna look really closely. We have the new Boston counselor coming as well because she has some of our sixth graders and we're going to look at what that would look like to put out to the sixth graders. But we were starting seven through 12 um, with our next focus being um, the sixth grade class and then still looking for a lot of what's done in fifth grade and younger grades is the second step social emotional learning and it's coping skills not so much of which is suicide prevention but not a direct um, lesson in suicide prevention it's more coping skills feelings and how to get help when you need help if you have a fifth or sixth grader that you think uh, could use some skills, that would be like a email Diane McCarthy because she might have a, a community program that would be a, 
a great resource for you. Or your school counselor. Any other guess? So I have a high schooler and three middle schoolers. <laughs> so two are in eighth grade and one's in 10th. Do you guys have a calendar or a schedule of when they may be going through this specifically? So I kind of know, so I can then Thank you, thank you. That's a Joyce Lewis question and she knows she has the answer. So I will send out a school messenger before we go into your students' grades. So in the month of September, it's seventh and ninth graders. As we roll out into other grades, you will get further communication because I want families who have reasons why they want to opt their child out. They don't think, feel that this is a good time for that information for their child. I want them to have that opportunity and make sure that they don't miss it. So I will keep everyone informed before we go in, into your child's class. It's safe to say that before springtime, we will hit those two grades. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good questions. I have stickers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, same, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, we applaud you. you. <laughs> okay, if there's no questions, you are free to leave, as we would tell your children. That's right. <laughs> but really, thank you so much for coming out.